morning, Golden Stars. It's Mr. Lamar here with this week's art lesson. We have been talking a bit about the elements of art. We talked about line, and you did some contour line drawings. We talked about color, and you did found object color wheels. Today we're going to talk about the element of art called texture. And texture means how something feels when you touch it. Is it soft? Is it furry? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it sharp and pointy? That's what texture means. But in art, there are two different kinds of texture. There's real texture, which means how does something really feel when you touch it? And real texture is what's used in art known as sculpture. So I have here two sculptures of a rabbit. This sculpture is a sculpture of a rabbit that's made out of clay. It's been fired in a kiln and it's been glazed. And you can see the highlights and reflections on this uh, here ceramic rabbit. And when I touch this, the real texture is very smooth. So its real texture is smooth, but it's also hard. Now I have another sculpture of a rabbit. This sculpture of a rabbit is actually covered in moss. So it's sort of styrofoam that's been carved into the shape of a rabbit and then covered with moss. So this is a very soft, fuzzy kind of texture. It's a little bit prickly. You can see all of the texture on this. And you can see the difference between the two different textures. So this is called real texture, and that's used in sculpture. The second kind of texture is called implied texture, and that means 2D art, like drawings and paintings. And it's how an artist implies that there's texture. So for example, if you were to draw a rabbit, you would use lots of little lines all over the body to imply that if you could touch that rabbit, it would be furry or fuzzy. Um, if you were going to do a fish, in fact, I have a piece of my art that is a fish. Let me grab it. So you've seen this hanging up in my classroom. It's a watercolor painting slash uh, colored pencil drawing that I did of a koi fish. And you can see that Mr. Lamar put a lot of time and energy into drawing all of the scales on the body of the fish, while the head doesn't have any texture at all, implying that the fish's head is smooth, but the body is covered in scales. So that implies two different textures on this fish. And I had to use a highlight and shadow and line to draw that and color it in so it looked like he had two different implied textures. For this week's art project, you are going to be doing some texture rubbings. For this, you are going to need paper and you are going to need either a pencil, a colored pencils, or crayon. Markers and paint will not work for this. And what we are going to do is we are going to go around our house and outside and we're going to find some different things to do texture rubbings of. You're going to go around your house and you're going to find some different kinds of textures. And if they're too soft, like a rug or a carpet, it's not going to work. They're going to have to be firm textures. So here I've got a tile floor in my bathroom and I'm gonna grab a nice bright color like red, and I'm just gonna rub over this tile floor, and you're going to see the texture of the floor transferred to your paper. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go find another texture to do. So now this is a mat that I have down um, in my workshop where I do stuff to stand on. It's a little soft. Let's see if we can get a texture from this. Now 
while the mat has a texture you can see, it's very soft, so when you press, it just squishes in. So we're not gonna get a texture rubbing from something that's too soft. This is a sculpture that I have in my living room, and you can see there's lots of real texture all over this. It's really nice and bumpy. So I'm gonna put my paper on this and see what kind of a texture rubbing can I get from this. That's the texture rubbing that I got from this sculpture. You may find it challenging to find a lot of good textures in your house because a lot of things in houses are smooth. But if we take our texture rubbing outside, then we're gonna find a lot of really fun textures. <clears throat> so, when you do your texture rubbings, try and pick darker colors. Really light colors aren't gonna show up the texture very well. So now, I'm gonna do a texture rubbing of my patio stone. And you can see, it's picking up a lot of really cool texture from my patio stone. Got this wood surface here. I'm gonna see if I can get a wood texture rubbing. That's coming out really nice. That has a lot. You can even see the little knot in the wood show up. So here I went and grabbed a leaf off of a tree and I'm gonna place this under my paper and do a texture rubbing of this leaf. You can see the veins on the leaf here that are coming through on my texture rubbing. I'm also getting a little bit of the wood behind the leaf. So I've got two different kinds of textures here. Now I have a different kind of leaf that I grabbed. Let me get a different color. Uh, let's see, reds show up really well. So now I have a fern leaf, and I'm going to try and see if I can get a texture rubbing of the fern leaf. So you can see here that I got a texture rubbing of the center and some of the edges of the leaf and a little bit of the wood behind it. So I went around my house and found some textures inside and then I went around outside and found a lot more textures to do texture rubbings of. I hope you have fun with this and you find some really unique and interesting textures. And I'm kind of excited to see some pictures of what kind of textures that you boys and girls found. Now for review, in art, remember, there are two different types of texture. There's real texture, which is used in sculpture, which is the kind of texture that you can feel and touch with your hands. That's real texture. And then there's the second kind, which is implied texture, and that's for drawings and paintings, where you make things look like they're smooth, or scaly, or furry, or rough, or smooth or shiny. That's implied texture. The next time that you do a drawing or a piece of art, think about how can you take it to the next level and add some implied texture to your drawing. Can you make it look like it's rough or smooth or sharp or bumpy? Think about it the next time you work on a drawing or a painting of your own. All right, have a great day.